Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. Okay, so today we're going to talk about Cuba and how important was that little tiny island in the lives of the Soviet people. And of course, uh, the first thing that comes to mind when you think about Cuba, you think about Caribbean Missile Crisis, Khrushchev, and Kennedy. And Cuba was right in the middle of this scary conflict between two giants, United States of America and the Soviet Union. It was the time when the world was the closest ever to the nuclear holocaust. Cuba was also the reason why Comrade Khrushchev was removed from his position of the leader of the Soviet Union. His reckless actions in Cuba scared quite a bit the other leaders of the Soviet Union. So that's first instance ever that Soviet leader didn't die at the helm. He was removed and peacefully died as a retiree in 1931, actually a couple months away uh, from the date when I was born. So I was born in July of 1971 and Nikita Khrushchev passed away on September 11 of 1971. So Cuba, or as we say in Russian language, Cuba. That country made a huge impact on lives of the Soviet Union. We were well aware of its existence. Fidel Castro, of course, was our hero. And Cuba was the example how the little country can stick it up to the big bully, its neighbor, United States. And the fact that even, what, 60 years later, after Cuban Missile Crisis, United States still has embargo on Cuba tells you something as well. Well, first of all, I would like to share my personal experience with Cuba. Actually, I never had a chance to travel to Cuba. It's on my bucket list. And actually, I should know better. Because it was quite obvious that uh, our new president, Donald Trump, hates anything that Barack Obama did. So when he got elected, I should probably just buy a ticket and fly to Cuba, visit Cuba, before Trump uh, put back all the restrictions and embargoes on the Cuban government. And now, Soviet children quiz time. So let's see if you guys can figure out this drawing. All right, now we're gonna install So what are you looking at? I'll give you three seconds. Raz, dva, tri. So that's a flag installed on the cube. You're looking at the Cuban Revolution. Or as we say, Revolucia na Cuba. I think it's pretty cool the whole idea of a cube and a flag on the top. And it's actually cool as well because it works to translate into English. We say Revolucia na Cuba, Revolution on Cube. Or you can just translate as Cuban Revolution, and it's 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 funny. As you may know, Soviet Union supported Cuba for a long, long time, beginning from Khrushchev time, then Brezhnev era, 80s. Uh, Soviet Union spent billions of dollars. I think total amount like 40 billion dollars were spent uh, supplying oil. Uh, and building factories and our, whatever else they did, you know, we still have here people uh, in Soviet Union having no indoor plumbing, but the uh, government thought it was more important to send tractors to Cuba and uh, cheap oil. And Soviet Union bought tons, literally tons of Cuban uh, cane sugar. And this is my memory from way back when I was a kid. Uh, I didn't know about it until my grandma told me one time she brought home sugar and she was complaining that all they had was a Cuban sugar in the store. So we're talking about the village. So now Ukraine 
uh, was manufacturing tons of uh, sugar, beet sugar, nice white, uh, super sweet sugar. And it was the first time I saw this different sugar, uh, Cuban sugar. And I think it was, it was more expensive. But I remember actually this is one of those things I still remember. I did like a scientific experiment. I put in a cup, you know, Cuban sugar and our sugar and I tasted it and I, I was shocked because it did have a different flavor like uh, Cuban sugar, cane sugar was way less sweet. And of course it has more like yellowish uh, color to it. So that's all I remember about Cuban sugar. Uh, Soviet people weren't happy about its quality. We also purchased quite a bit of Cuban rum, alcohol drink. Uh, my father, I remember, had one bottle uh, sitting in his bar. And so I remember that we had Cuban rum as well. I think that was pretty decent. It's just, you know, people prefer still vodka. Also, Soviet Union imported quite a bit of Cuban cigarettes, some cigars, but I personally said I never was into smoking. So I don't remember any cigars, but uh, there were several brands of Cuban uh, cigarettes. Partagas, Monte Cristo, Visant, Ligeros. And they were pretty strong. No one thought they were amazing. I guess they used the cheapest tobacco for cigarettes and using the best tobacco for cigars. But we had uh, those available all the time in the Soviet Union. We also had a magazine from Cuba called Cuba. And it was pretty much just like a magazine from England. We had Anglia. We had a magazine America from United States. Uh, magazine Cuba was more available uh, than uh, capitalistic magazines. And I never had it, but I remember one of my friends subscribed to it for some reason. And besides stories about uh, successes in socialist Cuba, they also uh, had on the last page a picture of the beautiful Cuban girls. And actually, I kind of remember one. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it uh, when I Google it. Uh, but a friend of mine, he put it in the bathroom so you know he had a separate uh, like a toilet right there was a tiny tiny room and then you have in a separate room you have actual bath so in the toilet room on the inside part of the door he uh, attached pictures of those cuban girls and one girl was so pretty and she actually had a bikini and she was kind of like mulatto and i don't know don't ask me why uh, why would you put pictures like that in the uh, toilet room but I just remember she was so pretty and like stuck in my head. And when I was putting information together for this video, I recall that instantly. When I was a kid, I used to collect uh, post stamps and Cuban stamps were very popular. A lot of them were really pretty, uh, nice looking stamps. I collected usually my topic. I picked the topic of, so there was animals and plants. Uh, so I had really cool stamps from Cuba, dogs, and some other animals. And interesting detail, you know, the way you spell Cuba in English language or Spanish language is C-U-B-A, right? But if you read same letters in Russian, it looked like Siva or Suva. So as the kids, we didn't know any better. So when we, we called uh, stamps from Cuba, Suva stamps. Quite a few Cubans went to Moscow, Kiev, and other big cities to study in the local universities. So we had a, quite a few of Cuban students. I never met one, but I know that uh, that was a big thing for Cubans to study in the Soviet Union. And a lot of Soviet workers were sent to Cuba uh, to help to build new factories. And actually, my um, godfather, so my Kriosny, uh, best friend of my father, uh, he went to Cuba for a year. My dad was asked to go too, but unfortunately, I don't know why, I need to ask my mother. She, my mother uh, didn't let him uh, to go because that's like a long time, whole year. And honestly, I don't understand why she uh, refused to let him go because daddy never had uh, great relations with my uh, father's drinking. And my dad missed this awesome opportunity to see uh, some other country. He never went anywhere in his life. Uh, but my, as I said, my uh, godfather spent a year there. Uh, he sent me a lot of stamps from Cuba because he knew I'm collecting stamps. And he also brought back this awesome uh, 
playset called Agent 007. It was made in Hong Kong, but he was able to buy it in Cuba. And it had this plastic gun and other secret shooting cameras. I was the coolest kid in my neighborhood because no one had uh, stuff like that. And when he actually uh, came back a year later, all tanned, cool. He also brought tons of this awesome, beautiful pink color shells, large shells. We never seen anything like that. So there was uh, his souvenirs from Cuba. So all his relatives and friends got one of those. So we had uh, one like we still, I think, have it in Kiev uh, as the kind of like Cuban souvenir. And of course, since he worked in Cuba, he earned some hard currency. So he bought for his family uh, this sharp two cassette uh, boombox, which was like, oh my God, was so cool in early 80s to have something like that in Soviet Union. And it's funny, what I remember from his stories about his uh, work in Cuba, that he mentioned that the Cubans were nice and friendly, but he wasn't impressed with their attitude towards work they said they were quite lazy they like to chill play music and just manana manana type of people uh, so he wasn't impressed as cubans as actually as the workers so i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings but that's what my godfather told me many many years ago and of course if we talk about cuba we have to mention uh, cuban protests we had quite a bit of those in moscow usually in the front of american embassy uh, there'll be students or angry workers, wink, wink, uh, gathering together with a banner says, uh, keep your hands away from Cuba, uh, freedom to Cuba and stuff like that. So that was a, a quite a popular way of uh, protesting in front of American embassy is to, was to show solidarity with the Cuban workers with the, and with Fidel Castro. Are you guys aware that Cuba considers to be a space nation because Cuban citizen went to space with the help, of course, of the Soviet Union? Soviet Space Agency had a special program called Intercosmos, and they uh, had uh, quite a few people sent to space from the friendly countries, including Cuba. So in September 18, 1980, Arnaldo Mendez became the very first Cuban that went to space. As I mentioned earlier, Soviet Union spent a huge amount of money on helping Cuba, something around $40 billion, and a lot of money went into construction of the uh, two-unit uh, nuclear power plant in Cuba, which was never finished, and now they have this giant concrete uh, structure just standing there abandoned and there's a small town next to it a cuban version of Pripyat. Uh, it's semi-abandoned some of that occupied but billions were uh, sunk in that construction of the uh, nuclear power plant which never went online and of course it's worth mentioning the town of lourdes you may not didn't hear about it, and I didn't know about it, but in Lourdes, uh, there was a Soviet GRU and KGB listening station. So quite a few Soviet soldiers uh, served in Cuba, and a lot of them worked at this listening station. Well, they took the people, of course, that were fluent in uh, English language. So they were right there in underbelly of the United States uh, listening intercepting uh, signals uh, from the United States. So Lourdes uh, intelligence uh, unit was located there. And of course, Cuba is a quite unique place. It's another country that uh, didn't succeed uh, in its uh, attempt to run socialist economy. It looks very sad and it looks frozen in time. And besides the uh, vintage uh, American cars from 1950s, you could see a lot of vintage uh, Soviet cars from 1970s and 80s. As I mentioned, I really hope uh, to visit Cuba one of these days. It's on my bucket list. There's two places I really would like to visit. It will be Cuba and Egypt. I really want to see the pyramids. So that's uh, things that I kind of plan. But we'll see what happens. Maybe it will happen. I'll celebrate 100,000 subscribers 
with trip to Cuba. How about that? But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. There are some topics about Cuba that I would like to make separate videos like that uh, abandoned nuclear power plant and especially uh, the KGB listening station in Lourdes. Uh, that could be quite an interesting topic to discuss. But otherwise, uh, as always, share your video with your friends and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at the teespring.com. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet 